All right, let's see, what do we have here? Ooh, snacks. <gasps> Better yet, a chem lab. All right, so uh, oftentimes we'll do this lab in class, but uh, given the current circumstances, um, I'm gonna try to get you the data at least and let you see what would take place in the event that you don't have some of the stuff at home. So you can get this lab off my site, um, just you know, either copy it down or if you've got a printer, um, you're welcome to print off a copy as well. And I'll show you the data that you need uh, in the event that you don't have a digital scale, or it really doesn't have to be a digital scale, any type of balance would work just fine. Uh, you'll need some regular old fashioned popcorn kernels, something that we're gonna call a uh, beaker or a popper. I um, actually don't have beakers here at home, so I had to use what I have, but I think it'll be just fine. A uh, handy dandy calculator, and uh, we should be good. So uh, if you take a look at the lab, um, please read through the background. But the gist of what it's saying is, you may or may not have really thought about popcorn too much. Um, most of you probably know that it comes from a kernel, but how it goes from this to that big, fluffy, white treat versus one of these guys that could potentially break a tooth is uh, there's a little bit of water in there. And I get that, you know, you pick one of these up and you take a peek and it certainly appears to be solid and it's not squishy. And that's because there's this process called curing it. And uh, basically what they do is they dry it out and uh, they try to reach a certain percentage of water. And the trick is if there's too much water in here, it's squishy and it'd go bad. And if there's not enough water in here, the popping can't occur. So the gist of what happens is when you heat something, you should be at a spot where you're mentally thinking, all right, temperature goes up, particles are moving faster. When you heat up these kernels, the little bits of water that are in there, those water molecules get excited and they start moving fast. And the faster they move, the more collisions they have with the outer shell or the husk of this kernel. And uh, it gets to a point to where there's enough push or enough pressure that's built up that that outer shell can't control it or can't contain it. And then the popcorn pops and uh, you're exposed to that delicious white treat. So here we basically just have a rundown of what, you know, popcorn is made up of and that whole process of basically water turning to steam and then a little mini explosion that pops the popcorn. So looking at the procedures here, I'm going to deviate a little bit because uh, this isn't being done in the classroom. This is just at home in my kitchen and uh, I'll still get you the data. But if you follow through the procedures and you're curious why maybe I skipped something or altered it a bit, I'm just trying to make the best of what I've got done. So we got to fill out this data table and I'm going to do one trial with you um, in a perfect setting. We would do two, but I think you can get the gist of what would take place here if we just go through one. Uh, I'm going to call this guy M1, M2, M3, just for the masses that we take. So the first thing we've got to do is get the mass of our beaker or our popper. So I'll take this over here and I'll turn this guy on. And I set that down. And I've got, I know it doesn't show up real well there, but I've got for my popper, 167.2. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that data and jot that down here. So my popper in grams, you know, the unit for mass is 167.0 grams. Uh, supposedly this uh, digital scale here is good to the 10th. So uh, we'll assume that that's fairly accurate. Now I gotta get my popper and kernels. So I'm gonna take these guys here and just so I don't spill them all over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. My dirty dozen. Okay, so uh, it doesn't have to be a dozen. That was just kind of what I'd selected out there. And it looks like I've got one sixty nine point oh grams. So this is my popper. This is my popper and kernels. And uh, when you get through to these calculations here, I've tried to put in some hints, like if you take the mass two and subtract the mass one, that'd be taking this guy and subtracting that. Um, I don't think for many of you, it'd be a real big surprise that the mass here went up when I put kernels into the popper. But uh, lo and behold, it did. 
And if we took this popper and kernels and subtracted the popper, we'd be left with kernels. So now the next thing we got to do is take this guy and toss it in the old microwave here. No affiliation with General Electric. Um, on the procedure steps here, um, I said to put a lid over it. It's probably not necessary that I'm doing it at home, but a lot of times in the classroom, I'd have a bunch of lab groups that are doing it together. And if we don't have some sort of a lid on there, um, everybody's stuff pops all over the place and, and we don't know who's is who's. So I set that bad boy for two minutes and uh, we'll let that do its thing. And while we're doing that, let's just take a quick look at popcorn. I eat the old man popcorn. This is just regular old yellow corn popcorn. And if you take a look at it there, not a whole heck of a lot of calories. Um, four cups there of pop popcorn. So that's about four good handfuls there. Only 110 calories. Uh, if you look through here, there's really not a whole lot besides carbs and a little bit of protein in your popcorn here. So uh, there's no sugar and there's actually a lot of fiber. It's a uh, relatively healthy treat. However, my wife buys uh, the garbage popcorn for the kids. Look at this little dinky bag. And you know when it says movie theater butter, it can't be good. But I suppose many people think that's worth the uh, flavor for the healthy trade-offs. I do not. But look at this. We've basically doubled up our calories for eh, arguably the same size serving. Um, our fat is through the roof. You got a quarter of your day supply of saturated fat. Um, that's not so great. None of the better fats, your trans fats there. A lot of sodium, your carbs are all still there. No sugar, but uh, somehow we managed to lose some protein. So uh, long story short, this stuff, not so great. This stuff, not so bad. So uh, we take a look over here. It looks like we're uh, kind of rounded about here. I don't want to catch anything on fire here, but as I'm uh, just letting that go through the count down there, I'm not entirely convinced that we need to have the whole show go down here, but uh, I'll give it another. We'll cut this off just a little bit, a little bit short here. All right, I think that's gonna be good. And now, one of the important features that I did put on here is this could be hot. So let's grab a little piece of paper towel here. Holy smokes, I chihuahua, that is warm. All right, so don't worry guys, in the interest of science, I'll take one on the fingers there. So now we got our popped popcorn there, which uh, take a peek at that, mmm, num num, delicious. I'm not gonna put any salt on there or any other treats because we wanna keep our stuff accurate, but um, if I, Warm this guy up. Ooh, that is hot. And try to mask this out. I got, whoop, I can't really see that too much there, can you? 168.8 grams. So here is our data. We got our popper. As of no surprise, right? We've got this heavier or more massive, I should say, because we've got the popper and the kernels. And here's something to think about. Hmm, my mass went down. Why the heck did my mass go down? And sometimes kids will think, well, you know, sheesh, you uh, probably cooked some of this off or uh, just magic happens, or I don't know, you know, things get cooked off. Well, no, think about what our mechanism was here, right? We basically got water in the popcorn kernel that turns to water vapor, builds up to steam and ba-boom. And uh, when that explosion occurs, some of that is released. So uh, we're down a little bit here. Now, with this data, you should be able to work your way through the calculations here. And take a look on the back there. There's some uh, questions for thought. And uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, see if you can work your way through this. I've uh, posted a review on my site as well that I can uh, discuss with you later. But uh, enjoy your work around through. I'm going to eat my popcorn treat, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon.